So, not only did this buff allow Iskandar to finally do farming after all these years, I, I wanted to get specific, but I know he came out in the uh, Fate Zero collab. So I believe it actually has been nine years. Uh, Iskander is not only back in the meta, he actually is at the top of all buster farming riders. Uh, and even to Ivan, it's not even close. Uh, like the gap between the bottom of buster farming riders and the absolute top, which is now Iskander, is almost double the damage of the lowest performing one. Uh, and by that, I don't even mean Colum like I'm not even talking about Columbus. I'm actually talking about Takeda Shin Shingen, or no, Europa. Let's do the let's do the low hanging fruit because I was gonna say no for Columbus, but he actually has somewhat good damage. No, let's go to Europa. And Skander actually does double the MP damage of Europa, like flat out. The gap is so fucking massive because of how a scanner's kit works and with the new appends his turn two damage isn't that far off his turn three damage uh obviously he's missing oberon buffs so there is it the jump it's not one to one but this jump is significant uh let's get started i'm happy to be saying like really good things about a scander so Pace attack, it is right by the midpoint. Just slightly uh, above it by 60. Good numbers. But spoilers, the other servants, Takeda Shingen, uh, Ivan, Iskander, they all have attack around the same point, which is why like this morning, it actually took me an hour to like do all this and get used to using this again. Uh, yeah, like I, I even like without so I did mess up in the calculations, and even with me forgetting Mystico buffs, he was already beating Drake. Already, without including Mystico buff, he was beating Drake's damage. Attack isn't everything, but for Iskander specifically, uh, compared to all these other Buster Riders, uh, Drake, Ivan especially, and Takeda Shinden a little bit, but he's kind of not even in the conversation just because his buff numbers are lower than what I thought they'd be. Like, it's honestly a little surprising why uh, Takeda is like as far down as he is. Uh, ch -ch -ch. He is the only servant that I can think of that actually got a buff that wasn't a skill buff they buffed his mp gain which i'm not gonna complain about it now especially because like it makes his extra attack just better but it's i wish they did that more often because there are definitely servants that could really use it uh but hey this is this i can say this is his fourth buff no this is his fourth buff and nothing has been double stacked yet or double buffed yet. So, it's what it is. Uh, hit counts, nothing really to write home about besides the extra attack being six. And with base 0.86 gain, it's going to refund a good amount. Uh, one thing to note, you should pretty much always be critting with him. Because with, uh, with them introducing the append skill to reset uh, skill cooldown by one, he can actually, like like I was saying earlier, how his turn two damage isn't as far off from turn three as other units. It also plays into it where he should not, besides the first turn, which, or starting on turn two, which you can just pop bitch skills to make him crit. Um, no, no, turn one, sorry. Wait, no, 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 no. Turn two, you would be popping his uh, third skill. Um, yeah, but he's able to back-to-back -back pop his mana burst just like Artoria can. And even, even with me saying that, even with me saying he cannot double pop his mana burst with Fitch, cannot double stack it. 
he still is beating Ivan. Like the amount of damage he's actually able to bring out, uh, pump out now is thoroughly impressive. Is very impressive. First skill is what got buffed, and this is all he needed. They did not change his charisma, and it used to just be a charisma, but it was 20%. So I'm not gonna complain about that. Like if it was 16. It was 16, 18, then there would be a damage jump. But his damage did not change. All he got was a 30% battery. And then, like, some some, some DPS uh, utility gives everyone uh, defense ignore. Uh, it's not going to show up much in for farming, but for multi-core stuff, it might come up. Uh, he also doesn't really have ramp up. So you don't need to be popping MPs every turn. It's just that's what is going to bring out his most his highest damage. This is on a third three turn. Um, oh, OK, so there is I'm going to fix this in the post, but there is uh, I did make a mistake on doing his setup for turn two. He's just not going to have 20 percent attack. Uh, just because his battery is on this skill, you, meaning you're probably not popping this. No, you're not going to pop this on turn two because then you wouldn't have the 30 for bitch and oh, for, sorry, not bitch, Oberon. But even still, like 20% attack, it's not going to be that big of a difference. It's just not. Second skill got buffed a long time ago. Uh, more specifically, strengthening fourth anniversary. Oof, it is. I didn't even realize it was that long ago. Five years? Ain't no way. It's only. It might actually be five years. It is actually five years since this man got a buff. All right, but 20% MP damage for the party, 30% MP uh, crit damage for the party. This can be double stacked with no issue, which is, and this is like part of the reason a scanner's always been a sub DPS. He always had charisma, he always had tactic. Once this got buffed, which was even earlier, uh, or no. Once he got this buff, which was fourth anniversary, uh, it solidified him being an actual sub DPS. But there wasn't a reason to run him as a sub DPS just because, like, who was he actually going to be run with? Uh, you could just use, like, there wasn't a point before. Third skill Mana Burst 50% Buster Up, 50% Star Drawn for one turn. Now, again, if it wasn't for the new pen system, I don't think Iskander would be beating Ivan as much as he actually is. But because we have this uh, a pen system where you can reset the, the skill cooldown by one, you are able to pop this on turn two and turn three, which it's awesome normally like you would either not pop this on turn one or you um wouldn't be able to pop it at all until turn three like it was either turn one or not at all it is nice i i like seeing what servants are like actually affected by this and how it changes their farming it's part of the reason why I'm actually doing servant reviews again, because like this fundamentally changes like this entire list is now completely outdated for most servants or not for most servants, but for a lot of servants, uh, you cannot look at the sheet and see their actual farming numbers. Uh, and I look at highest potential, not um, what is probably more reasonable, because uh, even with me looking at all this stuff uh this is assuming like you have two offends like this and this uh like me saying it so like is it 
feasible, yes. But I do realize this is Bond 14. Like, it's either you're talking Bond 14 or MP2 Bond 9, which for a lot of people, again, is not reasonable. It's not gonna reflect in the calculations. But I, I figured I'd put this out now just so people are aware. Because I'm not going to say there aren't people that have Bond 14 Iskandar. It, people could have that. People could have MP2. Uh, I just wanted to, like, put some numbers out there. So passives, 12.5% debuff resistance. Riding A, 11% uh, quick performance. Divinity C, uh, just extra tickle. With them saying we can swap a pens, uh, mm. so like I said, this only affects turn two into turn three damage not being that big a difference are you going to want to pick pick this over mana loading absolutely not if we're talking highest total damage you're just going to ignore this you're going to pick mana loading and you're only going to pop third skill on turn three that's just how it is i'm not going to advise someone to pick uh skill cooldown over mana loading unless you're using case scope that then it's a different issue or a, it's a different case uh and you have to readjust you're taking away a total of 30 percent mp damage from your farming and eight percent buster yeah like i with how oversaturated buster buffs are I, yeah, I wouldn't give up pranking for K-Scope just so you can double pop this. Uh, I, I believe that this just gives you more damage. Mm. Yeah. The, like when you look at turn like two buffs, like he already has like the hundred percent from bitch. Another 50% isn't going to matter that much over the MP damage. Even though he is double stacking MP damage, MP damage is not as abundant as Buster for Buster farming. Not until Oberon comes into the picture. Uh, yeah. So that that's just my thoughts on it. He is affected by this, but it's not nearly as much as like summer bb like summer bb wants this and she would rather no like summer yeah no summer bb she doesn't need mana loading she wants this so she's able to actually double pop her uh battery like she doesn't she doesn't need to be like in events starting from being able to mp on the first turn like, it's nice it makes it easier but if you're if you're like bullet to your head uh this or mana loading you would actually pick this a scander isn't like that mp buff this got buffed a long time ago uh and before like it didn't have the crit chance down now it does but it's a very small number and the defense down is after damage uh no other normal effect to this mp this is a very very early buff like 2017 um that might have been like first or second anniversary uh second anniversary yeah this this was right after um Gatia died like that was the end of uh the singularities and they were ramping up into the uh remnants 
because Musashi Dream I don't think happened until after uh, Gatesy had died. Right? Yeah. No. Ata. Ata. All right. Back to this. It's a buffed MP. Uh, uses damage and crit attack. His mats. He needs proofs, but he doesn't need gold mats. Thank God. Yeah, no, honestly, I will take, he's from year one. I will take these mats that he needs over him needing hearts, dragon scales, all that other bullshit that every servant in this year needed. He came out, not at the start, but far enough that he wasn't like needing all the mats every other servant needed. Yes, he needs proofs. Yes, he needs seeds, but those are significantly easier to farm than items that have like a 12% base drop chance. So let us bring up the damage numbers because it is interesting. So this is his first turn. Uh, he is using uh, cranking and that is already calculated in here. So first turn damage, low end 54,000, high end 67,000. If we compare this to the looping sheet, and we're gonna compare this to Ivan. Even though Ivan's not using, uh, he's not using uh, Bunyan CE. He's using Sumo because he has so much uh, Buster and MP damage in his kit. It just makes more sense to give him an attack buff because he's not getting one anywhere else. Seventy-two thousand. So turn one. Ivan beats him. Uh, I am also putting into question whether or not this is also including his uh, power mod. Because if it is, I I get why you'd calc it like this, but at the same time, it's it's misleading and it makes Ivan it does make Ivan look better than he is in com in comp in comparison. Um, but again, that's just me personally. So, but whether or not this is counting the power mod at all, I, Iskander already beats it or comes close enough to it. And this is a huge jump. I'm not going to say it's not, but that's just how rolling works in this game. Uh, so turn two, not that much of a difference. Uh, one sec. I just have to fix I have to fix the image so that it's actually reflective of how it works in farming. All right, so didn't take a picture this time. This is just like how I did the calcs. 40% uh, MP damage because he double stacked twice. Only one attack buff because he did not buff his, uh, or did not pop his first skill again. And the 150% here because he did, like in this I'm having him uh, pop his third skill first time and the next turn he's also going to. Um, we can also calc the damage for that, like just without him double stacking the buff, because that's probably a little more realistic for people. Uh, but the base number here, if he's able to pop his buster buff on turn two, 78,000. That like the low roll is higher than what I calc Ivan's highest roll. Um, Actually, yeah, no, I'm, I don't think, uh, yeah, no, 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 Ivan, this is not counting power mods. This is not counting power mods. Uh, I know this because when I did the calcs for Ivan, I didn't include power mods and he would like, these numbers were off by like a thousand. So I think these, again, very reflective to, to what Ivan's damage is. I, I do not want to downplay Ivan. I know how good he is, but I also like want to give i uh iskander like proper respect like i don't want to like um slander both of, either of them so yeah damage on the low oh yeah close that damage on the low end almost matches damage on the medium end surpasses it damage on the high end blows that out the water and again, like how I calc Ivan, I would like 
his highest number was reflective of this. So even a Skander's the highest number. Now let me close this because we're done with this Skander. Even his highest number up by a hundred thousand. So let's calc it. Let's reset this and then let's calc it like he's not popping his uh, third skill. Okay. Yeah. No, this looks a lot closer. But this is a this is a difference of like 220,000 uh, damage just by him, uh, you having the third append unlock. So awesome. Now, turn three. Turn three. 300,000 damage, not including a niche. There is no, the enemy is not man attribute. That's, that's also something like Ivan, uh, a problem he has. If the enemy is man attribute, uh, and chaotic or uh, lawful, his damage isn't going to increase as considerably. No, 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 no. I don't want to say that because at that point we're dealing with power mods and hypotheticals and it, it just muddles up the calculations. This is the scanner. He is not getting buffed by man attribute power mod because it's not even known whether he's going to be fighting that. Uh, and in the Ivan Kelk I did, he did not have a uh, power mod. He didn't have Vich's power mod added, just his own. But yeah. Beats Ivan even when Ivan gets power mods by a good 10, 15%. So is this Skandar finally a servant I would recommend people summon for? If you are looking for a buster farming rider, he is literally the best now. He is the best farmer out of all of them. And even outside of farming, if you need him to wave clear, he can do it. He'll be able to do it um, better than Ivan could. Just because more AOE buffs and then he also just does more damage at base. If Ivan is fighting servants, different story, which is why Ivan now is firmly in CQ. We're not, he's not firmly in CQ, but that's where he's definitely going to outperform Iskandar, especially because Iskandar, like, A, this buff only one time or one turn, and then this defense down is way too low. Ivan's buster rise down will affect his damage over time so much more. So it's going to be a long time before this is, like, fully updated. Um, and it's just... It's going to be so much uh, extra stuff. Uh, I do not envy Jord uh, Jordanian. I do not envy the guy that made this. Um, hopefully he eventually gets around to it, but I completely understand why it would take him a long time to do this. Uh, it took me like an hour just to do a scander, but also that was uh, me getting used to this again. Uh, yeah, the, like, this is a character that, uh, Gil can definitely respect. All right. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.